I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Monroe County Public Library Board of Trustees. Um, we have uh, one agenda item, compensation and working from home proposal during for uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, before we jump into that, I just wanna thank everybody, board members and others on the call for being here and being able to make continue to make the library a priority through the pandemic and thank uh, Marilyn and the library staff who are going through all the changes the rest of us are going through and although we're all very sad and disappointed we can't have our facilities open grateful to everybody working uh, to keep our virtual services open and uh, all the ebooks and downloads and a lot of great services still available through our public library. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to Marilyn to um, go over this agenda item for us. I will do that. And I'm going to give you a little bit of background too on what we have on uh, what we did and where we are now and what we continue to do. So uh, when we went out and closed the library on March 14th, uh, we left the library under our current emergency plan, um, which is effectively that staff continue to get paid and those people who are uh, providing some sort of an essential service um, would be paid at a premium rate, time and a half. Now that emergency plan is was really meant for those short-term weather events uh, and with some obvious um, indication here we've never obviously been in a place like this before where uh, we were out for an extended period of time and so um, the the um, plan that we are suggesting with this proposal is to is to move to a work from home uh, phase when we closed on the third after the 13th, the, the exempt staff continued to work. Um, we were in the library through the weekend and Monday and Tuesday following that, just trying to get our bearings about what it meant to us and what we would get, be continuing to do and offering in virtual services. And we were even at that point in time considering other things that we might be able to do like limited curb service and things. But just in that short period of time before we were to begin to do that, we learned a lot more about what that meant and how transmission of the virus was happening and, and where we would still be in contact with people and their things and returning books and we changed that quickly <clears throat> and we moved to simply a virtual uh, delivery of services and and at that point in time we shifted to having everybody working from home the exempt staff also and with the exception of a of a few people who still needed to maintain the building and payroll and and finances and and those sorts of things um, and at this point um, we need to shift gears again, time continues to go on and we still don't know what the ending date of this is going to be. And so we need to move to a situation where we can continue to be uh, responsive to the needs of the community in even new ways that we don't know about yet, but other virtual ways that we can deliver with the help of our staff and also to be prudent with our tax dollars. So we wanna put people back to work um, at their regular rates uh, from home as much as possible. And we'd like to start doing that on Monday. Thank you, Marilyn. Um, before discussion, do we have a motion to approve the compensation and working from home during COVID-19 pandemic proposal? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, discussion and questions for Marilyn? So the, the proposed compensation from the 20th to be announced or later, is that going to be still the time and a half? It would be at regular rates. Oh, regular rates. Yeah, right. For everyone. And what about Do those? Do you have a sense? Oh. Go ahead. What about those, those people who, are there certain employees that can't or don't have access to do work telecommuting? 
Yeah, that's possible. Um, mm -hmm. So we are working, the, the strategists and managers are working individually with each person to work out a plan for those who will be uh, presenting new services and working through details, but we also uh, plan to work on uh, additional staff training or professional development for those who can't in some cases and also projects and other things that we've identified. So although we do expect that everybody's going to have something to do, we don't know that we can fill all the hours of everyone. But Does we're going to try. Hourly staff? Um, yes. Okay. Extent, exempt staff have continued to work through this period full-time okay do you know yet Marilyn if there's um, the budgetary impact or how significant of you know what we've been doing so far with the time and a half and so on we've had so this is we're getting into the fifth week or finishing up the fifth week of this um, one pay period has been completed through that and, and it was it was about $2,500 for just the few people who were working that were essential. Um, so, and okay. that, of course, that's a very small portion of our staff. Mm -hmm. okay. Any would, other, oh, go ahead. It would not be sustainable to pay our whole staff at that the premium rate. Right. Mm -hmm. So is there any kind of um, information or guidance from um, the state, State Board of Accounts or anybody else at, the, at a different level, the higher levels? In terms of, of working from home or? or, or in, or the, in thinking in terms of uh, the public libraries, I'm sure you're all still communicating with we each are. other. What are you doing? So, is there any guidance from the state leadership of how you proceed and what's going to happen if it goes on for an extended period? Um, is there any, there's no chance of um, funds being pulled that we cannot meet payroll? Um, <clears throat> well, there, that there's a whole bunch of different answers to that question, I guess. I would say that we have sought uh, guidance from Jim, who's on, Jim Whitlatch, who's on our, our call here with us. Um, also, uh, we have been, of course, listening and watching all of the executive orders and the federal guidelines, and there have been, they're coming sometimes, in the beginning, there were many a day. Um, that has slowed down uh, to some extent. So we're watching all of those things and we're okay in terms of all of, of those things so far. The public libraries in Indiana, um, the, inter the Indiana Library Federation is having a, a director's meeting um, uh, twice a week now. I was on one that called this morning. And <clears throat> we are having a lot of discussions about just staffing and plans or phased return to the library and what that looks like and what the services are and how people are dealing with it. Um, there are, every library is very local and their decisions are very local right now, but I would say that we, um, we along with s several libraries, um, uh, closed at about the same time. Some of the big libraries around the state closed at, at a very much the same time. And then many of the smaller libraries sort of came along and up to the point at which there was a state, the state uh, mandate for uh, essential service closing. Um, many of them are planning to return uh, as soon as that mandate is up, but not uh, turning on the faucet, I guess I would say. They're, they're going to be doing it in a phased way, and all are still talking about what that is because we're looking for guidance from the state and or local um, health agencies to tell us what do we need to do? How will that look? Uh, what is what does safe mean? Um, how can we uh, how can we make that work in a building the size the sizes that we have and the number of people who might be in there at any given time? So I would say that it's all very much um, still open, um, but we're paying attention to all of those people uh, trying to figure out the best way to do it. In thinking about things financially, I know with the um, growing unemployment, and of course that could have an impact then on tax receipts, 
um, in the future? Is that being, I don't know, how is that being considered in our budget going forth for the second half of the year? So our property taxes will be the same. That one um, is, as, as we uh, know, they've already billed for those and that's that was shouldn't be changed. Um, income taxes, local income taxes will be affected in the, in the second portion of the year, although we should see about the same rate. It, next year is when we will see um, potentially significant changes in our revenue stream. Um, <clears throat> right now, we're only seeing projections of what that might look like, but we obviously don't know how long this is gonna last or, or, or what it might be in the end. Um, I will add, um, because this is just something that is that is out there, there are some libraries that are looking at various staffing models as well or changes in their staffing as time goes on just based on their on the, the revenue sources that they have or, or don't have, um, including laying people off. So we um, are in a little better state than, than some of those, uh, particularly city libraries that are depend that the, where the city is dependent on using those funds for other things that they're experiencing and having revenue losses that are much higher. But uh, we'll probably, I totally anticipate that we will see some reduction in our, our um, income tax it's going to happen. I just don't know what level yet. Is there concern, though, that maybe property taxes are going to struggle to be collected this year, just again, because people can't afford them? Is that going to have any impact on things? Yeah, um, I uh, certainly it will be a time factor. And yes, I'm sure there will be uh, problems for, for some folks. So property tax payment has been uh, extended so that it's it, typically is due on, on May 10th and now it's July. So <clears throat> the money that is distributed from the county will um, is likely to be delayed, which might mean for us that we have to, as a board, approve uh, transferring funds. Now we're in a fairly good st uh, state of having reserve funds uh, for something like this, but we don't have enough in the operating fund to pay payroll for weeks out so we may find ourselves in a place where we need to to uh, transfer funds to make our payroll will that be coming out of the funds for the new branch or is that a different revenue stream uh, it depends i mean yes ultimately uh, it okay. would but it's it's a loan as opposed to a a, a loss uh, because those property tax dollars would come through at some point but <clears throat> it would be from the rainy day fund okay Any other questions or comments on this topic? Then we'll do a vote. Um, Marilyn informed us over email the procedures from the state for these online meetings. We need to do a roll call vote. Um, so uh, I can call on people and ask for your vote. So first I'll say, you know, all in favor of approving the compensation and working from home proposal during COVID-19 pandemic, uh, please say aye. Uh, Christine? Aye. David? Aye. Kathy? Aye. Jamie? Aye. Fred? Aye. And I'm an aye. Did I miss anybody that I can't see? Kari's not with us, I guess. Okay. So the yeah. ayes have it uh, unanimously. Um, and do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. 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 Oh, do we have to do that roll call as well? <laughs> I assume no. Um, I don't think so. Opposed, nay. No opposed. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you. Thank you, uh, everyone else who's on the call, Jim and others, and any public who joined us or who will be viewing this as a recording. And keep visiting our website, 
we're open for business virtually. Take care, everybody. Be Thank safe. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye.